My um, intention with the flash fiction in this chapbook, um, The Conquered Sits at the Bus Stop Waiting, was to sort of move backwards along the timeline of a woman's life, a certain woman's life, um, and capture moments that, you know, regardless of how big or small um, they may seem, they're pivotal, pivotal moments. And I've said many times now at readings um, for this book that I'm not sure if the stories are about one woman at eight different times in her life or if they're about eight different women altogether. And I don't think I'm ever going to figure it out. So if you do, you can let me know. Um, so I'm going to read a few of these to you. Um, I'm going to start with The Sound of Her Voice, which was first published in Cheap Pop. And this one was interesting for me because the first thing that came to me um, was the image of two deer, which then opened up um, into the story of these two characters. So this is um, the sound of her voice. It happens when she speaks. Her husband's face disassembles itself and the pieces do not slide back into their proper slots until she stops making sounds. Sometimes she forgets and a single word escapes her, a word like no or when, and her husband's left eye migrates to the right side of his forehead for a moment. She cannot bear to see him out of sorts in this way. It's her fault. Her side of the conversation was always filled with pauses because she could never seem to find the right words. And so she would backtrack and come at it in a different way, a way she felt might be better or might better express maybe the point she was trying to make. Her husband once mentioned that he didn't like this, that her tendency to speak in spirals was maddening. You're driving me fucking nuts, he said. She makes use of gestures now. There is a whole language after all that incorporates finger spelling and body motion. She's consulted a website that claims this language can improve relationships. Also, did you, did you know this? Gestures are an effective way to speak with babies who don't yet vocalize. She keeps this in mind for the future. Maybe she'll take a class in this language. For now though, she wings it, holds arms out to the side, tilts body to the left, then to the right. Near dinner time, she raises both hands, fingers spread, so that her husband knows his meal will be ready in 10 minutes. Later, when he settled onto the couch to watch television, she cups her hand around her ear to ask if he'd like the volume turned up. Sometimes a raised eyebrow is enough to telegraph her message, and she's found that there are many different ways to nod, even though they all mean yes. He seems grateful for this silence. He sighs as if content. In bed tonight, she places her cheek over her husband's heart to indicate that she'd welcome intimacy. She's surprised to find that his heartbeat feels like a tiny punch, punch, punch against her face. It makes her laugh to herself. Afterward, there is a rustling outside the window and she knows that it's the two deer who come to feed off the apple tree at midnight. Can you hear, she begins. He strokes her hair. He places his hand over her mouth. Shh, he says, shh. Thank you for listening. Um, this next story is called, let me find it. It's the longest title I think I have. The man who came from an island where everyone knows how to sing. When I touched him that first time, it was by accident. The second time was on purpose. I left scratches in my wake and the scent of toasted almonds rose snake-like from the wounds. Intrigued, I bit into the tender flesh at the base of his throat. He tasted of crushed sesame, sweet crab meat, bits of kasha bark. He slapped me lightly across the mouth. This is when things could have gone one way, but went another. I'm sorry, he said. I licked his tears to stop them, and they were honeyed and sharp like Li Hingmui. 
Later, as we fell asleep in his apartment, I wondered if I should tell anyone that I'd found him, this scratch and sniff boy, this all you can eat buffet boy. Of course I told, I told everyone. By the end of May, he had wandered into the soft arms of my friends, into their supplicating palms and bright searching mouths. I have since learned to hide my secrets, but I can't find one now worth keeping. Thanks. Um, now, for this last piece, the character in this last piece um, that I'm gonna read is the youngest iteration of the women or the woman that I'm writing about here. Um, this story is called Ruby. Um, and it first was published in Smoke Long Quarterly. So here's Ruby. Undeterred by the presence of her mother on the opposite side of the room, Ruby is nearly sitting in the boy's lap. Together, they flip slowly through an issue of Vogue and pretend for the sake of decorum that they are admiring the severe beauty of the models. What they're really doing is pointing out words. He points to wet, she points to hard. He finds the word stroke and she runs her finger across shaft. The heat generated between their 16 year old bodies threatens to set the house ablaze. The boy adjusts the way he's sitting. His breath turns ragged in Ruby's ear. She is repulsed and delighted, just barely grasping at the truth of what's happening. It goes on and on like this until soon, even the most benign words, words like blush or juice, melt or under, come alive, pulsing and leaping off the page they're printed on. Ruby's mother looks up from the computer, eyebrows raised, mouth quirked to one side. Oh, the boy says. He jumps from the couch and shoves his hands in his pockets. I think I left my phone in my car. Did you, says Ruby's mother, already sure that he did not. She knew from the moment he stepped across the threshold that it would come to this. He has the profile of an Aztec god. He is slow-eyed and broad through the shoulders. Ruby's mother remembers boys like this. The phone calls at midnight, the musk of them. I'll help you find it, Ruby offers. They stumble out the front door puppy chasing puppy, and that is the last time that Ruby's mother sees her because Ruby never comes back, not really. The girl who returns to the house is another creature altogether, blind and groping and fettered to an enormous feral love. Thank you, everybody.